Hey everyone, I'm Erin Saxon, that girl from Jersey. Welcome to the show. You know, anyone who knows me knows I have my Rudy. He and I have been together for a bunch of years. We live together and um, this mom is off the market. But today I have something really special for all my single friends out there, women and men alike, um, but mostly women because let's help it but we have to help a sister out, right? So my guest is a conscious dating expert and a relationship expert, and she's founded Love Sanctuary, and it's a women's online spirituality and development site. And please welcome my friend, Angela N. Holton. Hello, Erin. Good morning. And Thanks for having me. I was like so excited. I was stumbling through your intro a little. I'm like, and then, and then, and oh, then. Beautiful. I mean, the truth of the matter is men and women both could benefit from your advice and your knowledge base, but really women are the main kind of community group that you work with, true? I, it is because I wanted to create a safe space for women to vent, to express their vulnerabilities, their frustrations, their concerns about dating and relationships. And I think women need to be contained in that safe space to be honest and authentic. I like that a lot. And Speaking of safe space, clearly we're in tune with one another because right. twinsies, twinsies woo -woo. magenta, is this magenta? I think so. Mine's more like of a deep eggplant, but on camera it might look, it looks pinker. Yeah. yeah. So just for everyone at home and who, those who are listening, we're both wearing like these really bright pink magenta, gore, we look gorgeous, oh, um, yeah. You know, because we do the <laughs> podcast as well. So people are listening as well as watching. Um, so we both, Angela and I both have these magnificent, bright, beautiful tops on of, of varying pink degrees of pink. That's right. And now we're going to talk about ladies who need to fall in love. Yes. And, and we fall in love first with ourselves. So that's. And why is that so important? Because you can't cultivate a relationship with anyone else if you don't start with loving yourself. You won't know what love looks like, feels like, or really even feel deserving of love that comes to you. So if you don't love yourself, you might sabotage a relationship that shows up exactly as you want it. You'll feel undeserving of it if you don't love yourself first. How do you know if you're sabotaging a relationship? Because I think so many people, when they're in it, as friends, you can we can all tell when our friends are sabotaging a relationship and they don't want to like even talk about it. But what are some signs that we could be in fact sabotaging our own relationships? One sign, and I'm being a little funny here, is when the relationship ends the same way every time. Mm. When it ends this, the same type of pattern, the same type of relationship, and there's sort of a common thread in how the relationship ends every time. So it's important to kind of really evaluate and examine our past to see how do all of my relationships end in the same kind of um, sphere, same sphere, right? Um, but I think it's when, when you practice mindfulness and meditation, you're mindful of your behaviors. Mm -hmm. And when you see that you pick the same argument, you have to, it's, it starts with self-awareness. If you're not self-aware, you're not gonna even notice that you're sabotaging your relationships. But when you're mindful, you can prevent that sabotage by noticing, uh-oh, here comes something that comes up that triggers me. I'm gonna react differently to it. So it takes a lot of self-examination. And when you see that the same arguments with your guy or your girl are showing up, you're going to your girlfriends and guy friends talking about the same relationship issues, you gotta turn the mirror and say, what am I doing wrong? So if we have a friend that we see doing that or we are doing it ourselves, like what, what should we do? Get a coach. <laughs> no, seriously, it, it requires going deeper, Erin. It really does. It takes a lot of self-work. And if you haven't done any type of therapy or coaching or journaling or self-improvement books to really connect, your friend can't tell you what the connection and how to connect the dots of your triggers and your sabotaging behaviors. Only you can do that. So you have to spend the time really d diving into your past, your relationship with your parents, you know, childhood relationships, past disappointments, and really examining what are the things that really trigger me and set me off? And what is the genesis of that wound, that ache, that pain? And then you have to heal yourself from that. And then you have to forgive yourself and the person who created that pain for you. And then you can start to move through it. But if you don't do the, the deep work, you're still just kind of on the surface, you know, and you'll never notice, see beyond that. Yeah, I mean, I notice a lot of people will break up and then they'll say, you know, I'm not, I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to date for six months, but then they don't do anything about it. They're just taking a break. So what, 
what recommendations do you have? I guess, is this what we're talking about all part of conscious dating? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because, you know, it, you can take a break from dating, but if you haven't changed the root of the problems, they're just going to keep showing up. Nothing's wrong with taking time off from dating, but, you know, as humans, we're hardwired for connection. We want connection. We desire connection. That's our human birthright. But what we're not hardwired for is relationship. We don't know how to do relationship. It, we're not born with those skill sets. We have to practice it. So during your time off from relationships and dating, build a relationship with yourself. That's the first fundamental relationship. And what happens if you don't want to take time off from dating? You kind of just want to dive back in, but you also know you need to kind of figure out your stuff. So what advice do you have for people who are kind of, so when I was dating, I tried to um, not be so limited in who I was going out with. Cause I thought, you know what, if I'm following a pattern and nothing's worked, so I'm divorced and my, my ex-husband's a wonderful man. Um, but I knew that who I was and who I am, who I was when I got married and who I am now, all these zillions of years later, and I have a 14 year old, like life has just changed since I was back out there. I thought, I don't even know what I'm looking for. I don't even know who I am really anymore. So do you have any advice for the on the fly dating while you're trying to figure like why Stella's getting her groove back? Stella needs to figure out who Stella is, right? I mean, that's a movie, everybody from the 80s or 90s. So, and here's the thing you asked a great question because I think women who have to constantly be dating and constantly be in relationship you're avoiding the main relationship. It just keeps going back to you. You have to spend time in that pain, that loneliness, that void of not having someone and find your peace and your authenticity and your purpose in that. Once you're happy and whole by yourself, you know, it's not about being a half person and finding that other half. It's really being a whole person and finding another whole person. So take the time off to get to know yourself date yourself, do the things for you that you want your companion to do for you, love on you. Notice when you're judging yourself, right? Change that inner critic to your inner cheerleader. Take yourself out on fun dates, romance you, write love notes, you know, journaling. Journaling is like my favorite exercise and the favorite exercise I share with my clients. It connects you, the unconscious to the conscious, and it connects your feelings, your deep rooted emotions. So that's how you get to know yourself. So for all the people that don't journal, I'm not a big journaler, um, so I wouldn't know if I was doing it right. Is there a right or wrong way to yeah. journal? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I tell people, write uncensored, write with no filter, write, no one else is going to read it. And if you're afraid someone's going to read it, after you write it, tear out the pages and rip it out. But, you know, writing is a powerful form of healing. You know, otherwise things can stay trapped inside of us and we don't want that because it can show up as stress and pain and aches in the body. We got to get that out and meditation and journaling. So powerful. And on top of that, it enhances your creativity. Like I can't tell you how much of my creativity juices have flowed in the last five, six years from journaling and becoming a writer writing through my pain, writing through my stories and becoming a blogger and being published here and there. And I just launched my first book this week. Like none of these things would have happened if I just didn't start with just journaling, which I've been journaling since I was a little girl, you know, your little diary, same with thing. Key. Did your diary have a little key? It did, had a lock on it. I can see one now I held, I think I still have it in storage. And I had my little love notes from my boyfriends folded in there. Really? In oh. one year I burned all my old love notes. That's sad. You know, well, I read something that was like, you need to clear out the space and the energy. And I was like, yeah, and I didn't think much about it. And I burned yeah. it. Now I'm like, man, I have no evidence of all these men that were like madly in love with me. <laughs> I know. And just such a nice look back, you know, I mean, some people are in relationships where they find old stuff and then that person's upset and jealous. And I say to the people that are the ones that kept little notes, like a little note from a boyfriend or a girlfriend when you were in high school or a mixtape playlist. Yeah, I have that too. modern day lover can't handle that. We have to talk. Absolutely. I mean, look, I have a history, I have a past. It doesn't get erased because I meet someone. Can you imagine? So I can't. I can't imagine Rudy being like, I saw, <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Your mixtape. Like, why? You know, you're like, you're keeping your senior prom photo. <laughs> and then there was like, you know, I, I, and there's, there are grownups 
that are doing this to one another. Wow. I mean, it just, you know, are you coveting it? Are you sleeping with the love notes under your pillow, under your bed? You know, are you <laughs> sleeping, right? Are you reading it every day? But if it's, if it's part of your memento, it's like, it belongs to you. Your past does not get erased because you meet someone. I and mean, are you going to get mad at my mom for saving baby teeth? Like I'm looking right. I mean, it's literally to me, like the same topic, it like is. a little love note or a postcard and my my lock of hair and a baby tooth. Like it's just kind of my past. It's your bad. But what about like the more recent love interest right before your partner comes along? Would you oh, say well, those, yeah. right? Would you save those? Probably not. Like no, because if they were great to save, I would have saved the person. There you right. Go. Like I think when you when you attract love, when it's puppy love and it's like you're in your formidable teenage years, I think that helps as a breadcrumb trail to talk about who you became, right? These were my stepping stones or my, oh my gosh, my heartbreak or my this and my that. And those are like badges of honor. But like, you know, if I save something from like, Rudy and I've been together almost three years. So for my, my one before him, <laughs> well, why the hell didn't I just stay with him then if I'm saving on to stuff? So it's a good point. I, I like where you're going there, Angela. It's kind of like an energy. It can be an energy blocker, but someone that still kind of resonates in your heart in a painful, difficult way. Yeah. Burn those letters and get rid of them if you're so connected and rooted still. Duly noted. Yeah, duly noted. So let's just talk about dating per se. Like, do, do you think social media has helped or hurt the dating experience? Completely hurt us. Right? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Ready? And- go. Yeah, go. Yeah. The technology space in general has made us lazy Mm -hmm. and it's made us lazy in dating. You know, I've come up with something that I call couch potato dating. And it reminds me of, I thought of Al Bundy and uh, and married with children and we have the, in our phone and we're just swiping left, swiping right. Oh, let me pick up my phone round. Let's just see who's on there right now. Swipe left, swipe right. And there's no real intentionality behind it, you know? And so I feel like it, it came around a time that we need it, but we thought we needed it, but it's really disconnected us more. And I think we have to come back down and get rooted in connection and feeling and seeing each other. And that's what conscious dating is. It's about showing up. It's about being present with each other and, you know, not being on your phone all the time, like really being mindful about what you want and knowing who you are. And I just think social media has just created this zombie of dating. It really has. And there's, you know, since we're on the topic and, you know, we once talked a while back just briefly about this. And so I, I want to bring into it a little bit because, you know, I've met Rudy online. Mm-hmm. I met him on an online dating app and, and I learned so much about the world of online dating and it comes with, it's, it's great. Um, it's convenient, as we say, with the couch potato. It, if you don't ever go for it and meet people, though, it's literally just window shopping. Love so it. I don't recommend that. Um, but as a user experience of that, I will say there's scammers. There are people that play games. There's people who are married. And then on the positive flip side, there's so many people that just really want to find great relationships. And I think that if used correctly, could be a great tool. Absolutely. I think it's, I mean, you know, what other tool do we have that can connect someone from Australia with someone from the U.S.? You know, like it really bridges the gaps in, in the global dating world. But there's pros and cons to everything. And I think first and foremost, you know, when you know your intention, put that intention forward. You know, yes, you have to kiss a lot of frogs, but what you seek is seeking you. So keep putting that energy of what you want and it will find its way to you. Uh, I just think we have to be mindful, you know, be careful. You know, I get a Google phone number so someone doesn't have your actual real phone number, your business number. Good. Let's talk tips. Yeah. Talk to someone on the phone first you know, so you know that they're not catfishing you, you know that they exist and maybe ask them to send another picture if they just seem too good to be true. And then don't make the date complicated. Don't feel like you've got to be dolled up, makeup, mascara for the ladies, hair blown out, whatever. Just show up for a cup of coffee, walk around the park, walk around the mall. I had a date not too long ago over the summer where we met like high school students and walked around the mall for an hour. (laughs) Like 
I love that. The looper. And it was easy, you know, and it was easy just to have conversation. I didn't like have to get dolled up and sit and have dinner. So, you know, ladies, use your time wisely. You don't have to go out for cocktails. I actually like to recommend not going out for alcohol first, because if your intention is to truly connect and meet someone, you want to be on the right level of consciousness and not have any kind of alcohol or altered state of consciousness interfering with really receiving and perceiving somebody. So absolutely. You mentioned catfishing before, and it's a term that we all use, but for those who may not be as familiar with it, let's just, so we're not leaving anybody behind. Talk to me about catfishing and what that's all about, what that means. So catfishing is basically someone creating a false fake account. They'll use, they could be in, you know, Timbuktu somewhere and they create, you know, this man who's just idyllic and his gorgeous looking man. And he's just got the perfect profile and bio, like any woman would want him. And then he doesn't make plans to meet you. It's just a lot of texting. He doesn't get on the phone, but they even have catfishing so sophisticated where they do get on the phone. And like that famous basketball player in Denver with the woman in Alaska where she brought two, not a lot, no, Canada, Canada. She brought two people together to date and they were connecting, not knowing that she was the mediator connecting them, scary stuff. Yeah, that also happened with a football player and he had a whole relationship and publicly was like, what do you mean you don't exist? I mean, it it happens. Like it, I've been catfished before. And um, you know, when you're sad and you're looking for love, in all the wrong places, like, no, but you know, when, when you're sad and you're lonely and the weekends are really slow when you're single. Yeah. I remember when I was single, I just wanted Monday. I can't believe I'm admitting to it, but like Saturdays and Sundays are just so long. These days are so long. And even if you're keeping busy with your friends consciously, you're aware of what's not around you, right. which is, I'm not saying it was healthy how I was thinking, but I can't be the only one that fails that when you're single, the weekends are long. And, um, you know, I just, I just remember then feeling like there was a random Sunday and suddenly, you know, you tell yourself the fairy tales as little girls were fed all that. And so it was like, just when you least expect it, you get an instant message on one of your sites and he's gorgeous. His wife died and he has two little boys who need a mom. (laughs) Where this crap is real. And I was like, they need me. Oh my gosh. He's, you know, and oh, you know, he's, he's in the military. (laughs) Like, like, oh, and he's now on a government project in Dubai flag, you know, like, but when your weekends are long, or when you're in a moment of, huh? And that that's when they that's when they come in. They do. They're there all the time, right? Yeah. But then when you're when you're the weakest, that's when you notice them, right? And that's when they get you. Yeah. And so I get how they fool even professional athletes because you're so busy, you're noticing that everybody went home with their wives, and you're like wish I had somebody. I could have hookups. I'm a pro athlete, but I'd ru- I'd like something meaningful. And then boom. It's true. Half the time these catfishers for men are, are other men just using a female photos. That's how crazy this is. It's, like I was communicating with someone recently and he said, how do I know you're not really a man? And I'm like, wow, I never, never been suspected of someone thinking I was catfishing. You know, it was like, cause he was like, your picture, you're beautiful. This is like too good to be true. And I'm like, would you like to talk? So you know that I'm real, you know, but it was funny. I'm like, wow, someone thought I was catfishing. So the first thing that I used to do and, and it didn't turn off a lot of people. In fact, it, for the ones that I was meant to attract anyway. So I call it proof of life. Right. And, um, so from that Meg Ryan movie, uh-huh. it was proof of life. so basically if I start started to talk to somebody in an online dating situation, I would, I wouldn't go back and forth a lot with texts or I'd get right on that phone. Or I'd say, let's exchange more photos. Send me a photo of you holding today's newspaper. I love it. Wherever you are. I love it. But today's date. I love it. So if you're in Dubai, fine. Send me that newspaper. I love it. That's a good one. 
because your photos match your other photos. That's, that's cool. And now I know that this is who you are for today. And it doesn't mean because I don't want them to be, they, may, they might, might not even be as attractive or that's their thin photos. I'm not checking to see if they're fatter or whatever. That part never bothered me. It was about, I just really wanna make sure the person I'm starting to have a virtual crush on is the person that really exists. So I, I know so many professional speakers. And so when I used to be on there, there was four friends of mine Mm -hmm. that are always on professional stages and I've been set up or approached by three out of my four friends. And so I was like, so I'd call the guy who really, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right. So, So I would call this guy, Mark, and I'd say, Mark somebody's using your photo on blah, blah, blah site. And he's saying his name's Enrique. Wow. And he's calling, he says he lives in, you know, wherever. And he's like, oh my God, that dude has been using my likeness for four years. I can't catch him. I've tried to go to the police, da, 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 da. And so I thought, well, that was rare, right? It happened to three other times with two other friends. Crazy. Odd. And they're all really good looking men. Yeah. All they're really successful. Good looking, right. Yeah. So the whole package was like, who wouldn't want me? I look at the lifestyle I lead here in Milan and we're in Barbados. And, and, and that's true. They are, but not the guy that's calling you. You got to be careful. Got to use prudence. Got to use your best judgment. Be careful, be safe. And like you said, you know, get on the phone, the texting back and forth for days and weeks. Yeah. And yet I would rather do that than go out and try to go to a bar because that's really not my scene. I'm not the girl that guys walk up to at bars. Like I, you know, I don't know. Like I'm never like the, Hey, can I buy you a drink? Like never said that to me ever. Not once. It's so funny because you just said you're not a bar girl. So if you're not a bar girl, that's the energy you're putting off. So they know, you know. Yeah. So I've totally sabotaged myself. So I go out. (laughs) You got Rudy. You got Rudy. Yeah. No, thank God for Rudy, right? (laughs) Like, you know, I just, but it's funny. Like if you're not that vibe and all of a sudden you're forcing yourself into a situation that that's not your vibe. And I know people that are the opposite. They're like, I just can't do the online thing. I'd rather be introduced by a friend. Or I'd be rather, you know, or go out. So when, when introducing people, like if for all of us matchmakers out there, getting back to the conscious dating, what kind of advice do you have for us when kind of wanting to lovingly put people together? Well, let me first say, I mean, who doesn't want to meet that way? Like, that's a wonderful way to meet that way. But how many people is your common friend going to have to introduce you to really Mm -hmm. limits and narrows your dating pool? Really? I mean, and online dating, it's not just about you might meet your match there. It's just increasing your dating pool, your numbers. Dating is a numbers game. So if you're waiting for that match that comes around once a year, every two years, you're not really increasing your chances of being in a relationship. So, you know, there's a safe way to practice online dating. I still encourage it. Doesn't mean you're going to meet your man or woman there, but it creates the energy of attraction and, and flirtation. So you take that energy off the online and you feel that when you're out you know, meeting other people, you're at the bar, you're at the club, or you're out doing whatever, you know, you have the energy like, wow, this woman is a man is enjoying their lives. They've got men or women around them, right? People want what someone else has, not what no one else wants. So just wanted to say that, right? So in terms of being the conscious dater, dating matchmaker, you know, we can't think about just because he's single and she's single, that they're a great match. She's attracted, he's attracted, they're a great match. Hey, you know, like it's just not enough, you know, really think about the intrinsic qualities of a person, you know, first, do you know what your both people want their life term lifelong goals are? Do they want family, kids? Do they want to live in a different country? Because if they, if you're not starting off there, it's challenging. So kind of find out mindfully, what do both people really want before you connect them? And then see what they have in common on the sort of, um, activity level, the things they like to do. And then are they both fun and interesting? You know, really, I think that's key. If they can, because even if they don't match with Cupid, if they can laugh and have a good time, you've at least matched a friendship, you know? So, yeah. So, you know, think about, you know, just don't say, 
oh, you're single, he's single, put them together. Oh, yeah. he's gay, he's gay, put them together. Oh, she's black, she must want the one black guy in the office. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> can I tell you how many times I've had that? Oh, she's a pretty black woman. She should be with this black guy. <laughs> you know, and people have nothing in common at all. Start with the best of intentions, you know? I just, oh, yeah. Right? Yes. I mean, Embarrassingly so. Yes. So date matchmakers, think about that. Like, I don't want to be with your one black friend or your, you know, your group of guy friends or that one. What I just think more about who I am and what you know that I like before you put us together. I mean, I've gone on some, I'm like, huh, they really missed the eight ball here. Like, what were they thinking? <laughs> oh my Gosh. Listen, we're gonna. I'm gonna ask this question and answer just to be evergreen because I. It's how we view this. People will be able to access this all the time. Absolutely. So, you know, you're on the road. Your book just came out. And what would you like people to know about you? Where would you like people to go and find more information? Because if they wanted to meet up with you, if they wanted to sync up with your event schedule, how can they best do that? And what do you want people to know about what's going on for you? Right. Uh, thank you, Aaron, for asking that. So the best way to find me is on my website, which is lovesanctuary.com. And you can always Google me also, Angela Holton, and see what I'm doing, where I'm going. Find me on Instagram and social media. Launched the book, The Conscious Dating Method Workbook Journal, which is a companion for women, primarily women. We'll get to men later. To, it's a, their companion book while they're dating. I don't think there's anything else out there right now in the market that's going to help women be self-reflective while they're dating. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage women to show up as the best version of themselves as possible. So this workbook I created is about asking the right questions while you're dating. What are you learning about yourself? So you can find that on Amazon or on my website, again, lovesanctuary.com. You can always go there and see where I'm teaching a retreat or a workshop because I'm bringing the Conscious Dating Method workshop to people in person, teaching them tools, the five principles of conscious dating so that they can take these tools and start practicing and dating differently. So my goal is to go to different cities, go to different countries and really spread the message of love, self-love, starting from that most important critical place. Oh, that's awesome. Thank goodness for someone like you. I wish I met you while I was looking for Rudy. I wish I met myself years ago. <laughs> Good point, right? You're like, I've been with me and I didn't even know it. <laughs> no, and I had to go through all this to let you know, but I am single, but I am happy. I am purposeful. And I'm, you know, there, there were times where it was like, why am I, why me, why me? And I under, women, I understand your pain and frustration, but when you come from a place of desiring a relationship and not needing one, there's nothing missing in your life. There's no scarcity. There's no lack. And I can say, you know, partnership is just going to be the icing on the cake for me, not the cake itself. Awesome. Angela, thank you for being here. And everyone, thank you for listening and watching uh, wherever you are tuning in from. And uh, we'll see you next time. Angela, thanks again. Thanks for having me, Erin. Bye, everyone. Thanks for that girl from Jersey.